Hello, 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 and welcome back to today's podcast. Thank you very much for being here. I appreciate it, and I appreciate all of you that are consistent, and kudos to those of you, again, that are binging and just heard about me for the first time. <laughs> all right, today, I do not have anything comp- you know, specific that I want to talk about, but I do have a lot of things that have come up this week. And last week, just miscellaneous things that I've seen that I thought, you know what, let's just put a big miscellaneous podcast together of things that I think are important. Maybe not things that you guys, you know, not something that I can necessarily talk about for 15 minutes without beating a dead horse. That gets annoying. I know some of you think it's funny and you laugh at me for that. (laughs) But I'm really here to try not to annoy you. I have, maybe I've talked about this before on other podcasts, but there is, I'm not going to name any names, but there is a, a farm podcast out there that I tried to listen to recently and all they talk about is their beer they're drinking. The podcast has good information if we can get past the beer portion of it. And maybe I don't care because I don't drink beer, but I'm like... Oh my goodness, can we like what get to the point? I don't have all day. And I'm like fast forwarding it and probably missing some stuff and so want to just get to the point. So, this week I had I had a couple of them. And I usually have people that go to other agents or start out with other agents and then they come to see me. But to have a couple of them in a week is not typically normal for me. And so I have, and I've actually had, I've had more than that. Just I've had more than normal because a lot of, as a lot of you know, or maybe most of you don't know, but Ohio national was a mutual company and a lot of infinite banking practitioners wrote business with Ohio national as a company. And that company demutualized last year. What that means is that they got sold to somebody else and they are no longer a mutual company. So those people will no longer get dividends. Now, a lot of those people have jumped ship. (laughs) Agents have left um, Ohio National. Clients are moving policies around. It's kind of a mess. And it is important because the dividend is a major piece. Now I don't have, I had a handful of clients with Ohio national. I never wrote with them, but those, some of those clients were older, like they're now 70 or older. There is no point to be moving them at this point. However, I have had some younger people come in and say, Hey, Mary Jo, I had these Ohio national policies. What do I do with it now? I'm just looking at my options. I don't know that they necessarily lost faith in an agent or anything, but I had one yesterday and he said, well, the agent told me to convert his term insurance to whole life insurance before they demutualized because it'll be grandfathered in. You'll always get the dividend. Now I've never heard that. Um, you can grandfather in a lot of stuff in life insurance, but you're not going to grandfather in a dividend to a company that doesn't exist anymore because Ohio national is no longer a company, right? They got purchased. They were bought out. And so I'm like, I don't, mm, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. So did a little bit of research and there is not going to be a dividend paid forward. So now what does this client do? And I said, well, and the sad part is, is it was a colleague that wrote this policy. He is an infinite banking practitioner. Um, and so as much as I love the Nelson Nash Institute, I'm just going to be straight up honest and I'm sure I will piss off a whole bunch of practitioners that listen, but they're not all good. Um, not every practitioner is running their office as if they care about their clients. Right. And so this client, I said, well, where, you know, did the agent help you? Did that, what did the agent talk to the company? Did what, what did the agent do? And he said, well, the agent told me to just go find it on my own. It'd probably be just as easy or something like that. And I'm like, what, why would it, if the agent took enough time to convert that to whole life 
and you already had another whole life policy with them, why would he not be helping his clients if he's writing with this company and this company is being bought out and all these changes are happening? I mean, I had a handful of clients there and I was trying to get as much information as I could. And it's not even an issue for me because I wasn't an agent with that company, but I'm still on the phone with that company. I'm still trying to call. There were a couple of times that I did tell my client, you know, please call or please email. And this is exactly what you need to say. And the reason why is because I'm not an agent with that company. It's gonna, It takes me 30 minutes, 45 minutes just to get through, and then they won't give me the information I need and whatever. If I email and copy the client in, they do not respond to me. They only respond to the client. And so sometimes it's just easier if I say, okay, here's exactly what you need to say and do that, but I'm going to help you through that. I was extremely disappointed, extremely disappointed to hear that another fellow agent does not give two shakes about his client to make sure that that's done. When my clients work with us and it's not me, right? I mean, yes, it's me. You're working with me, but you get a team of people. You don't just get me. You get myself and I have two assistants and you're your stuff is answered in 24 hours. Like unless something catastrophic is going on, like we don't have internet or something crazy, your stuff is going to be answered within 24 hours because my assistants are amazing. And I, and for me, you might not get to talk to me within 24 hours because I might be in meetings or whatever. So you might have to wait to ask myself questions or you email and I'll get back to you right away because email is just, I can do that while I'm waiting for people to get on meetings. And sometimes I'm doing that while I'm talking to one of my assistants or whatever, or at night, I might just be sitting in the chair answering emails, but you cannot like, to say that you should just go do that yourself. And here's what happened. He went and did it himself and found out that what he was told that these dividends are grandfathered in is not going to be the case. So now that guy lost a lifetime client because his client is young. He lost a client for life because we don't want to service them, because we don't want to do the work, find somebody to do it. Hire them. If you have to share your income, big deal. Unbelievable to me. Unbelievable. And so I'm not here just to pat myself on the back today, but I'm going to pat myself on the back just a little bit because I, it is super important to me. If you call our office a person is going to answer unless both of us, both of them are on the phone and I'm in a meeting, we are going to answer the phone. Human beings are going to answer the phone. I am not going to have some automated thing, dial one for this and dial two for this. And you know, then maybe you, then the phone will ring. No, the only time you're going to get automation in this office is if we do, if everybody is busy and that does happen. I don't like it. Believe me. I've thought about hiring a third person just to answer phones. That's it. That's all they do all day is answer phones because I don't, I absolutely hate when I call someplace and I have to leave a message every time or I have to push one, push two. Well, you're going to speak English, whatever. I don't like that. And so I try to really not do that here. You are going to be able to talk to somebody Okay. We're going to help you. It's crazy. It's absolutely crazy to me. And it's sad because this industry already has so much crap that we don't need more of it. Um, the other thing I ran into this week is I had another guy who came to me and he already had life insurance policies. He was already doing infinite banking. I think he read about it in 08. He said, Hmm. Yes, he read about it in 08, which was a long, long time ago. That was before I read about it. He went, he got himself a policy, all was good in the world. He, his buddy is a life insurance agent. His buddy convinced him 
to 1035 that money. So what that means is we are going to take money from the existing policy and move it over to a new policy. That is typically done if we're going to go from like universal variable or indexed, which y'all know I don't like. We're going to go from one of those products to whole life. Sometimes people will go from whole life to universal variable or indexed if the agent has persuaded them to do that. Understandable? Kind of in those cases. What is not understandable to me is this wonderful person got taken advantage of and the agent went from a whole life policy to a whole life policy. Both good companies. The new company, who I believe is a, sl a slimy company, they are good financially, but I do not, I have yet to come across an agent that works for that company that is nice, that is professional, that is not slimy, that is not out for commission. Big national company. And so they 1035 a whole life policy to a new whole life policy. So guess what? The new guy does not know crap about infinite banking. So now the client sits there with nobody to help him with the concept. He was in a situation where he's got some debt, they're, they had to start over, they're trying to get line of credit paid down, but yet they're borrowing the line of credit to make payments on equipment, on land, on their policies, which is not ideal. Absolutely not ideal, but due to circumstances, they in the last three years, they've had to leave where they were and start over with nothing. They are doing absolutely fantastic and they have a ton of money in these policies because they are good policies. So we just use the policies for the strategies. The, they were not using the policy because the interest rate with that company is 8%. And so they were not using their policies because the interest rate at the bank was lower. And here is a case where I don't care if the interest rate is 20% in the policy. If they use the policy, guess what? They have the ability to pay interest only, and then they can get that line of credit paid down and free up some cash and really kind of get their feet under them to get some momentum. Uh, they absolutely have everything that they need in the policy, but they just didn't know how to use it because the, co the concept piece is how do we think about money, right? The agent isn't understanding that. All the agent did is come in and said, oh, I get this. I read this book. I get this and I can write you a new policy and I can t cancel your old policy so I can write you a new policy and make more commission. Because what did the new agent also say? Our company pays a higher dividend. I am telling you, this company, and I am not going to name names, I'm not even going to give initials. Even though I wish I could, I am not going to bow to that level. But boy, oh boy, as you can hear in my voice, it ticks me off. If you guys are dealing with a company, and this is the same crap that this company uses all the time. So when your little agent from your national company comes by and says, oh, we've been around forever, we pay better dividends. You better pay a better dividend because you're charging 8% on a policy loan. And is that dividend gross or net? Because what happens when I talk about dividends, I talk about a net dividend and my company doesn't release dividends. Why does my company not release a dividend rate? Because they're not going to play the game. Dividends are based on a formula and you take one piece of the formula out of there and that dividend rate is now a lie. And so you want to walk around talking about your big dividend. What does your big dividend mean? How did you get that number when it's based on a formula? What piece of the pie did you take out? And so we have big dividends. We've been around longer. We're a better company. We've all, mutual companies have all been around forever. So if we really want to look at who's better and who's been around longer and what everybody's doing with numbers, you better look at the vital signs of what these companies are doing. 
but don't be going around telling people, this is another thing this company does. Oh, you'll make an 8% or a 6% rate of return in our whole life policy. Guaranteed. <clears throat> yes, I've heard that before. Guaranteed. So I said to the client, this was a different client. They said, well, this company said we're going to make 6% rate of return. Um, or eight, I think it was 8%. 8% rate of return. And I said, eight? What are you talking about? I'm not making an 8% rate of return? Like the policy guarantees four gross. That's part of a formula. That's not a guaranteed 4% every single year. That's part of a formula. And yet you are going to make 8%. Oh yeah, we're going to have a you know 6% dividend. What? No. I said, you go back and ask them what the guarantee in the contract is. Oh, the guarantee in the contract is four, not eight. Yes, because they're adding it all together. Dividends are not guaranteed. Stop buying policies on rates of return and dividends. The company is important, but if you have a good agent with a good company, you're going to win. This 1035-ing this whole life policy into another whole life policy? Oh, <laughs> oh my gosh. I need to breathe, you guys. I need to breathe. Did I write this client a new policy? Absolutely not. I will help them use the existing policy they have because they have an agent that can't help them with a slimy company that I would never in a million years write with. This, I would, I will help them, but I am not ever going to 1035 their money to a new policy with me. Never, never, never. They will continue to pay that policy. They will continue to use that policy. I will help them. I will guide them. I am not going to talk to their agent. I will instruct them what to ask, what to say, all those good things. But I'm going to help them because I want to make sure that they get on their feet. This is exciting to me because they are just on the verge and they are so set up to do it because they have these great policies with a ton of money in them. They just did it. They, and they knew how to use them. They knew it because they even had good ideas that I had not thought of, but they needed somebody to confirm it that understood the concept. And Mr. Slimy agent didn't understand the concept. And yes, I call him a slimy agent and I'm sure he's a very nice guy. He's a friend of theirs. So I'm sure he's very, very nice, but who does that? Who does that and sleeps at night? Knowing that those people started a policy and they started that policy with capitalization, right? When we start a new policy, we have to capitalize that thing. Nelson talks about that in the book. It's like starting a business. We have to capitalize. And when we do that, guess what? There's a cost. Now, these lovely people started another policy moved over what they had and they have to recapitalize. Why? Why? If this agent got it and he was such a great person, why would you not just say, you know what? I'm going to just help you use that policy and we'll just start one policy for you over here. We don't need to have, we don't, you're going to start another policy anyway. You leave one with him and, and I'll just start you a new one. You know how many people I have? that already have whole life. And I tell them, you just leave that policy where it's at. We'll just use it because there are a lot of good mutual companies out there that I don't work with. They can't structure a policy the way I can. They have traditional whole life, but that doesn't mean that it's a bad policy and it should be canceled because they're going to have to recapitalize and they're going to get less death benefit because they are older than they were when they started that last policy. I actually had a new client yell at me a couple of weeks ago via email because I did not 1035 a universal life policy that he had. 
And you can only do a 1035 and move that money when you start a new policy. You can't just randomly do it. And so he was mad that I didn't do that. Even on a universal, a variable, and an index, as much as I hate those things, we're not always going to 1035 that because it doesn't always make sense, especially with an older client. Let's watch it and see that if it's going to go backwards, it may not go backwards as much as the illustration is showing. Let's watch it. But I can't get you that same amount of death benefit. If you pass away, your family's going to be more ticked off that I 1035 to policy and gave up death benefit than go, oh, this is great. Dad had a policy. Yeah, dad had a policy with $200,000 less death benefit possibly. You guys, there's got to be a reason for that stuff. And you don't just do it willy nilly. So the client knew his stuff. He's read all the books. He's listened to all the stuff but he works with an agent that does not understand. So these are really two good examples. And I did not plan for the whole dang podcast to be about this, but here I am talking, beating a dead horse. But here's two good examples. One is a infinite banking practitioner agent that is not caring for his client and a non-practitioner agent that is not caring for his client. Every industry is going to have this. Every group of people is going to have this. I try very hard to make sure that my clients are taken care of. And it shows when you go online and you see people talking about me in forums and my clients are saying the customer service is amazing because her assistants are amazing. She gets back to us, right? And God forbid, if I have forgotten people, I have done that. I am human. I've forgotten to get back or it takes me a little bit longer to get back me personally, because there's only one of me, but I, we try very, very hard to never have our clients call the company. It's not your job. It's not your job to do research on life insurance. That's our job. Our job is to teach you infinite banking. And if you have an agent If you're a client of mine or you have another agent, this is one thing that one of the clients said is his, his, um, original agent was not, was not talking to him, but once a year. And so I don't, a lot of, we try to call our clients quarterly. We ask them, how often do you want to be called? And we call them and then they say, well, I'm so busy right now. I can't talk right? But you have access to me. If you're a client, you have access to me whenever you want. You are going to have to take the initiative to schedule the appointment. And so that we can visit, but I'm going to give you that hour. I'll give you two hours, whatever it is that we need to visit. But you may have to take that initiative to do that. Because when I do call you, you're going to be like, Oh, Mary Jo, I'm too busy. I can't talk. Right? Because my time and your time don't always align. And so Part of this is you becoming the banker. You are the banker. Mary Jo is not the banker. It's about you knowing your numbers, you taking control, listening to the podcast, educating yourself, rereading Nelson's book, all of that good stuff. So make sure that if you're doing this, you have a good agent. So all my miscellaneous stuff turned into having a good agent. You never know where I'm going to go. Like, you guys, I don't plan this clearly. (laughs) I just start talking and away we go. Now I have all kinds of other stuff that I had listed out that I could talk about today, but that's going to have to happen in another podcast because I have already gone long enough to where you guys are going to get bored listening to me. And I like to keep these somewhat short. So it is not a bad thing to come to me. And it's funny because both of these guys were like, I'm sorry. I went to a different agent. You don't, a agent client number one didn't even know me. And I wasn't even in business in 08. I wasn't even in business in, well, I was in business in 2011, but he didn't know about me. So it's not your fault. The other client, same thing. He didn't know about me. He already had policies before he ever found out about me. So kudos to him. Both of these people don't feel bad that you went to a different agent. 
kudos to you for coming in and sitting down and at least talking to me. Even if you guys don't ever want to do business with me, that's fantastic. At least you had that conversation. At least you're listening to the podcast. At least you are educating yourself. Huge, huge, huge kudos to everybody that does that. If you are buying my book for the first time and you're going to another agent who maybe doesn't understand farming and ranching or agriculture in general, who maybe does not understand the infinite banking concept, they read the book and go, oh yeah, I can do this. You can do what? You can sell me a policy or you can teach me the concept. Because remember, the concept and the policy are very different things. I had a gentleman tell me, he said, oh, so really? He said, this life insurance is just the tool. Bingo. Yes, it's just the tool to utilize the concept, which is a thought process around money and how to utilize money correctly. People cannot get that through their heads. They always want to talk about it as an investment. And it's not. It's not. And that was one of the other things I had on my list to talk about today. So I'm going to talk about it real, real quick. Because I want to read this to you. I was doing my podcast for Without the Bank. So those of you listening to Farming Without the Bank, I have a whole nother podcast called Without the Bank that I'm doing all kinds of stuff on, talking about. So if you want to listen to more of me, kudos to you, but you can go to Without the Bank. And I was reviewing Nelson's book. And in this is what he talks about. In the, in the chapter in his book, but I can get a higher rate of return. This is in the first paragraph of the book. We are not addressing the yield of an investment. We are discussing how you can finance anything that you buy. It is always better to finance it through your banking system than out of your pocket. We are not addressing the yield of an investment because this is not an investment. That's it. I'm going to end it right there. Because if I keep talking, you're going to forget what I said. It's not an investment. Infinite banking is a concept. And you want to use somebody that understands it. And you want to buy a policy from a good company. And you want to buy a policy from an agent who cares. We try very hard to be all of those things. The teacher of the concept and the good agents that care. And many people think that they're like, oh, Mary Jo, I don't want to bother you. You have too many clients. If I had too many clients, I wouldn't be looking for new clients to help. Because I'm here to help you. We're here to save farms. We are here to make sure that you are successful. We are here to get you on your feet. And a lot of times we are here to be your cheerleaders. But that's our job in addition to setting up the policy and making sure that that is all done correctly. This is all I do. I don't have some side stuff that I do and fill this in part time. No, this is all I do. So let me know if you need help. Let me know if you have questions. If you have read the book, schedule your appointment. If you've not gotten the book, go to farmingwithoutthebank.com, grab the book, and then schedule your appointment. That's all I ask is that you read the book first. And then when you have your meeting, come prepared with numbers. Yes, come prepared with numbers. It's amazing how many people I have talked to recently who are not prepared with their numbers. I can't help you if you don't have numbers. Not possible. I need to know your numbers. So come prepared. But otherwise... You're welcome to email me, Mary Jo at withoutthebank.com. Happy to help. Thank you guys for letting me visit with you and, you know, get on a soapbox. Um, otherwise, have a great day and we'll see you next week.